Welcome to Pottery Revisited, the movie edition. I'm Tori. And I'm Shay. And your first time we're seeing our faces, maybe, if we decide Probably. to keep it in. I hope we look nothing like what you pictured. Except yeah. if you're our moms. In that case, I hope we look exactly how you pictured. Hi, Mom. Yeah. Hi, Mom. Yeah, so today we're going to watch the first Harry Potter movie and just give a kind of little commentary slash movie review. And it's actually been a while since I've watched this. It's usually make my, my comfort movie. So it should be fun to go through them it. Uh, last year, I believe, yeah. with my boyfriend because he hadn't seen all of them. And I told right, him right, it was right. like the prerequisite films in order to date me. So. Yeah. I definitely watched this probably when I had COVID because I needed mm. something good to watch when I thought, when I was feeling like the worst. That so, makes sense. Times. Also, fun game I came up with going forward. Okay. During our previous podcast episode, Tori made out a point that a lot of the times where Harry's involved in altercations and could become seriously injured, he comes out all right. And she was wondering if maybe that was because of the horror crooks inside of him trying to protect itself. So mm. I thought it would be fun as we watch the movie to keep track of moments where we think it could have been the horror crooks or Harry, just for future reference and also for our own personal enjoyment. Sounds good. All right, and uh, press play. So this opening scene is like very nostalgic to me I and mean, everything the, the way they did like the first chapter segue yeah it was perfectly oh, done amazing. i mean it was a really short chapter so it didn't make it yeah. that difficult it's just establishing but... everything yeah amazing i like how they handled mcgonagall yeah during our test we actually talk about how harry potter is really known for its like crazy special effects and how they did everything but this is like so early and like i think this came out in 2001 so back then, special effects were expensive and really hard to do. So they don't even have McGonagall transfer on screen, like she is later in the movie, but they have yeah. her like against a wall. And these, a lot of the effects in this movie are gonna be like practical special mm -hmm. effects. So I really like, keep, wanna see, see those cause you don't get that anymore. The funny thing about the Deluminator is I remember the first time I sort of saw this scene thinking, wow, that's so cool. And now we have a Google Home and it's like, I can tell yeah. my lights to turn on. I can tell my lights to turn on to a specific color scheme with my Basically, phone or my you voice. you have a deluminator. Yeah. Oh, here we go, McGonagall's transformation in a shadow. Glamorous. I feel like how this scene opens up with like two really big British actors, Maggie Smith and Richard Harris. Yeah. And little me had no idea. I was like, wow, look at that old guy. Look at these old people on screen. And I'm like, this is acting royalty. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. We were know. so uncultured. Yeah, I know. Oh, look at all these, like, I just love the setting too. Everything mm -hmm. looks so English, but the cars look so old fashioned. Yeah. Uh, still think Robbie Coltrane was such a great choice for Hagrid as well. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I could see anyone else as Hagrid. Still amazed no one woke up to the motorcycle thing. But then again, I live in the city. Yeah, so me too. You like, live... you hear backfiring cars and motorcycles and dogs barking you and stuff all the time. just learned how to tune it out. Yeah, they're probably like, ugh, hoodlums again. I can't imagine how Harry didn't wake up flying on a motorcycle in the middle of the night. He must have been... Trauma. <laughs> concussed. <laughs> Brain trauma. I love the idea of McGonagall just checking in on Harry's potential guardians and being like, these are unacceptable guardians, Dumbledore. And yeah, just I like, like McGonagall yeah, actually looking out for Harry's well-being. Whatever. <laughs> it's like we said in the, our first episode, like, what if McGonagall have raised Harry? He probably would have studied a little bit more. I think he would have been more of a rebel. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Hopefully it wasn't, like, a, a cold night. I guess this is, but this is in, like, October. Like, I don't know what... Isn't it cold in the UK? They just don't knock on the door or, like, make sure that he's taken in. They just kind of, like, leave him on the doorstep. I just assumed they, like, ding-dong ditch. <laughs> <laughs> knock on the door, leave a baby, and run, you know? Yeah, this opening sequence. Amazing. Chills with the, the music. This iconic music Harry Potter amazing. music. The soundtrack is The so title. Good. Amazing. Beautiful. Magnifique. And transitioning into little Dan Rad. Aww. I love watching the, the earlier movies because they're just so tiny. He looks so weird without his glasses. Yeah. 
I know, like Tanner doesn't actually wear glasses, but I remember for the longest time when I saw him at like premieres and stuff, I'm like, he looks so odd without the glasses. <laughs> this house looks so early 2000s too. I kind of love the idea of a tiny room under the stairs, like not to make it human living and only in yeah. that room, but like as like a little reading nook or something, it's a very cute idea. Yeah, in college we had a uh, closet under the stairs, but we used it to, sh- to uh, store a bunch of crap we didn't want. Oh my god, look at the wallpaper. Oh man. It's like cooking Canadian bacon. It looks like pea meal, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say the actor that plays Duckley also does a really good job. Yeah, like, especially as a immediately child. immediately do not like him. Yeah. And Harry giving that side eye. Yeah. They're cute little houses, yeah. though. The little, like, yeah. semi-detached. The little front gardens. Mm-hmm. It's very cute. Yeah. I do like the costume designs with Harry when he's living with the Dursleys. Like, like what he's wearing compared to what they're wearing. Like, he's obviously wearing hand-me-downs and it's oversized and it doesn't fit. Yeah, and like it's like Petunia. so faded. His shirt was probably yeah. Dursley and Dudley are all so wearing faded. like nicely fitted clothes. Like look what Dudley's wearing compared to Harry. Like Dudley yeah, looks like a nice well jumper care. and a button up. <laughs> and Harry just looks like a hobo. He looks like a punk. Like yeah. if he was wearing it intentionally. With yeah, the definitely and the what hipsters would definitely wear what Harry is wearing like yeah. intentionally. He's a fashion legend. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a Horcrux Harry moment talking to a snake. I don't know. I think that's more of Voldemort, the piece of Voldemort in him. So he's talking to the snake and just chilling. Yeah, but the piece of Voldemort is the horror crook. So I would say this that's is true. a horror crooks Harry moment. It's a Harry crooks moment. Harry eh? crux. Eh. <laughs> oh, I just noticed they even have the spello tape on Harry's glasses. Nice what touch. What is spello tape? Is it basically ah, just? True. I think it's just like scotch tape or. In my mind, it's tape. more like saran wrap. I don't know why. Like cellophane. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> this part is great, because how many times in your life did you want that to happen to some little brat, you know? Yeah. Some type of... I'm sure after I watched this movie, I just had moments where, like, my brother or sister did something to piss me off, and I'm just like, hi, was a wizard. You would just be, like, something bad would happen to you right now. I still find it surprising. We talked about this in the second chapter, but um, Harry's just, like, totally chill with Snake. And he's not really surprised that he can talk to it. Well, I think he's just, like, not used to someone thanking him. He's like, this is a polite snake. I'll just be polite back. Like, he's... Not like everyone else. The snake had been like, you're a jerk. He would have been like, well, so are you. God. I usually don't watch. When I I go back to the movie, I sometimes skip the Dursley's part because I just find the movie more interesting when they get to Hogwarts. But honestly... The Dursley is like all the actors and actresses that play it through the Dursley, they, they do it so good in the earlier movies. Like yeah. you don't like them and they've only been on screen for like three minutes. Just the tone the actress who plays um, Petunia has. Yeah. The first few words to Dudley, I'm like, oh no. So she's. Well, that's how phenomenal. I read her because she just comes across with that like, like doting helicopter mom. If only Harry had grabbed a letter and opened it. In his little nook. I mean, I guess he's never got mail before, so he didn't know if it was something he didn't know what it would is. allow. Why does Dudley dress exactly like the penguins in Mary Poppins? <laughs> I think that's a, that's a smeltings uniform. <laughs> I actually really like what they did with the uniform for smeltings. Because <laughs> described in the book, it's just like crazy with like the cane and stuff he gets and... Just classic UK give boy a uniform stick to beat each other with. It's just bad for yeah, business. Yeah, it just seems like a this bad idea. Copy. It's cool. Maybe it just builds character in the UK. Yeah. So I know if my brother had gone to a school that had gave you canes, someone would lose an eye. I mean, I remember the stories from my brother about what like initiation and things were like in our high school, and I cannot imagine. Oh yeah, before they got rid of it or they they cracked down on it. I'd be very concerned if there was like five owls on my car. In the, daytime. in the daytime. Like, to me, I'd be concerned about, like, rabies or something, because there has to be something wrong <laughs> with nocturnal animals that are out at that hour. I don't know how popular owls are in the UK, but I can rarely see owls, especially in the daytime. I mean, kind of, I like the set design, too, where you just see all these pictures of Dudley. Yeah. Nothing makes me want to punch Vernon more in the face than that little smile he gives Harry oh, as he burns all his letters. You can kind of see his... I'm losing it a little bit with his yeah, hair, his hair and is everything. A disaster. 
I love I Hedwig's theme. It's such a good song. Yeah. It's like the iconic Harry Potter song, like all throughout the movies and anything else. Like, yeah. hear this. It's like perfect. I love the uh, classic meme that's like, we know Harry's a Gryffindor because he's jumping around playing in the letters. If he were Ravenclaw, he'd pick one up off the ground and then leave with it. Yeah. Like just casually shove one down, down your pocket, pretend not to have it and read it later when you're in the bathroom like a regular person. I don't know. Harry can't think that far ahead. It's Gryffindor Clearly. logic. You don't think of the after, you think of the now. Mm-hmm. Vernon's descent into madness <laughs> portrayed pretty well. I love this spooky mm-hmm. little house on its own little island. If there weren't definitely spiders there, I would actually be yeah. okay with it for a weekend getaway. Oh, he, the scene makes me sad. He has to draw his birthday cake on the dirty Dirt. ground. <laughs> on the floor. Why does Dudley have his watch alarm set for midnight? <laughs> Maybe Harry said it. Seems kind of unnecessary, unless he was yeah. planning to wake up and harass Harry. Maybe. When Pen passed like, him. Still seems unnecessary. Hey, Greg's here. I love how they set him up to be so scary, and then it's just Hagrid. Did the speedest know? guy. I do like how they filmed it, because Robbie Coltrane actually isn't as tall as Hagrid, so they have a, a double for him for mm-hmm. his, like, exterior shots. But they just frame everything to make it appear as he's, like, way bigger than he is. Yeah. I know they did a lot of those tricks like they did in Lord of the Rings. A lot of perspective yeah. manipulation and... Yeah, I love it. Like, this makes sense. <laughs> yeah. You look just like your dad. Yeah. I feel like this cake is probably poison, knowing Hagrid's cooking. Yeah, good thing Harry didn't eat it. Although I'm surprised Dudley ate it. He must really eat anything. Yeah. I wonder how close it is to Hagrid's rock cakes, which are infamous. Infamous indeed, yeah. I feel like if I saw that as a muggle who didn't believe in magic, my first thought would be like, oh, that's a very fancy and obnoxiously large lighter. Yeah. Like, did you really need to have it in an umbrella? It sounds like he says keys and grains. Keys and grains. He makes grains. all of the bread. <laughs> Hagrid bakes all the bread. That's a bad thought. <laughs> shows how low Harry's self-esteem is. Yeah. He's like, I'm not good at anything. I'm not special. Like, I live under the stairs. No one likes me. He's been, like, raised to believe he's useless and so incapable of being special or bringing anything unique to the table that he can't even imagine it. I think Fiona, or not Fiona, I think that's actually her real name. She plays, like, the bitter, jealous sister really well. Yeah, she really does. Like, I can see in her eyes yeah. years of trauma and hatred and resentment towards her sister when she says it. It's yeah. Especially because, like, she didn't know everything about her sister's backstory when yeah. she, like, filmed the scene. So she really dug deep. Here's where your Hickard starts his Dumbledore appreciation. Yeah. Got to prime Harry to know who's yeah. the greatest, most importantest, most loveliest. I think me and Hagrid might get in a fight if we ever <laughs> met, because my first thought would be to insult yeah. Albus Dumbledore in front of him. I, I love the pigtail. I love that he has to have it surgically removed at a private hospital. But I also yeah. wonder if he has to have, like, his stomach pumped after eating that Hagrid cake. Also, giving Dudley that pigtail is, like, borderline, like, a criminal offense. Like, it's not just doing yeah, magic without Yeah, we talked about that before. And... It's like, I'm not saying forever in Azkaban, but, like, serious fines... Yeah. Serious punishments. Maybe a year or two in Azkaban. I love the framing here as well to make Hagrid look. Huge. Gigantic. It's kind of sad to say, but nowadays the wizard children would probably just buy all their stuff off Amazon. Yep. I'm kind of wizard portal yeah. service. Well, the wizards are usually behind in the times with technology, so maybe they're just like... Yeah. People are like, you're going out to buy things in person? You can't wear this online? Oh, look. They're already expecting Hagrid to want a drink. Yeah. We'll see how much of an alcoholic hour. Hagrid is in the movies. Yeah. I think they tone it down a bit so they get their um, PG rating. Do we think Quirrell always wore a turban and, like, that's why he ended up being a convenient choice for Voldemort? Or do you think he, like, 
took to wearing it oh. when he knew there was a chance Voldemort would plant himself on the back of his head. I don't really, like, talk about it, because he was previously a teacher at the school, then he took a year off to get experience, and that's where he met Voldemort. I guess he could have played it off that it was part of his, like, travels. Yeah. And this is some pretty cool special effects for, like, 2001. Yeah. I remember seeing this and was, like, amazed. And I remember... I remember back- being a kid yeah. and just dreaming that I had a secret wall that turned into a door. And well, I always wanted, that, like, like, a somewhere. secret room. Yeah. Like, a bookcases that could flip around and something like that. A lot of the music, too. And we see, like, the crowded streets and all the crazy-looking shops that don't quite seem to fit. <laughs> yeah. this movie does a really good job at just like establishing the whimsy of this new world and like each film yeah. kind of is like like adds to it but this is like the establishing film yeah to kind of pull you in and get that that feeling this really good job and sort of establish what wizard and magic rules they're using in this yeah. world because there's different wizards aren't a new concept yeah like they set up these witches fly on brooms, you know? Yeah. Nimbus 2000. It's funny how impressed Harry looks about a broom, though, because it is just a broom. Yeah. Like for him right then, it's not like a really fast car. It's 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 a broom. Yeah, he's drawn to it. I mean, I love my Swiffer wet jet, don't get me wrong, but yeah. I don't think I would have been that excited at 11 about a broom. It's cool that all like the goblins for all like practical effects like the actual actors prosthetics and everything so i think in the later movies they did a lot of it with special effects yeah after the fact so definitely get more of like um it definitely feels more real because they're actually like really there yeah there's an actual individual person yeah playing the character so that's why i didn't like how they did the um, in the later films how they brought Dolly back. He didn't feel as authentic because you could tell that he was definitely really computer generated. Yeah, compared to how he was in the second film. Absolutely, and they took Dobby out of things because of how expensive it was to like animate yeah. him. They could have just done him the same way they did in the first or second film, and it would have been beautiful. Yeah. Sometimes technology is great, but also sometimes it just like you get so used to doing things through technology that you lose some of the realism. Mm-hmm. And I love how Dumbledore wanting Harry to already know about the stone. It's like Hagrid, since you're gonna have Harry and be at the bank anyway, just pick this up very from secretly. Get the stone yeah. for me, would you? Don't let Harry know. Don't tell Harry anything. <laughs> I don't know why goblins need to have such long nails. I feel like that would make it harder to, like, count the gold and stuff. Like, it doesn't seem practical. Like, I have not intentionally long nails, but when they grow long, I can't do things. Really, it's just like when girls get the really long fingernails, you just learn how to do things. I guess. Different way. Important like that. Very secret, so we're bringing the 11 year old along. Yeah. I do love this shot, just like the tiny little package. Because I remember in Harry in the books, just like all this security for a tiny little package. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. It's the secret. He's like, I'm 11. I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But also, is there another option nearby? Yeah, it seems like it's the only option, at least in, like, London. Yeah. So it seems like that's where everyone from um, Hogwarts gets all their wands. And then yeah. when uh, we meet Fleur and uh, Crumb, the fourth book, they have, like, their wands from different wand makers. Yeah. Must this be a like very, like, country. niche market if you only have, like, yeah. one per, like, a certain region. Mm-hmm. I like how unnecessarily spooky they make Ollivander yeah. for no Well, he's reason. described in the book as being kind of weird. Like, I, he yeah. gives a, like, you just k- kind of get a vibe off him. So I feel like they really portrayed that into, like, who they got to play him. Just, yeah. like, yeah, there's just something off about him. You don't really know if he's good or bad. 
I do really want one of these wands because they look so cool. Yeah, I still want one. Like, I wish I had a wand. <laughs> I wonder if all wands choose the wizard and let them know they've been chosen with, like, magical sparkles or if yeah. it's a different thing for different wands. Because then Carrie describes, like, just having, like, this, this sensation that yeah. it was, like, correct. I mean, they do sort of show you the moment. It's like, oh. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's that type of wand and, like, my wand would make me a plate of mozzarella mm -hmm. sticks or something. <laughs> I wonder if Dumbledore, like, told Ollivander to keep that wand aside just in case. Because Harry's going to come. Just for fun. His own Harry's personal, professional curiosity. Yes, of course. Next year I didn't have this moment where they know. That sounds exhausting. I think they're just like the multitude of wands he must sell every year. Yeah. For how many years? If you're wanting meets is putting all this pressure on him. Yeah. You're gonna be great, you're gonna be great. He's like, I don't know anything. It's a lot of pressure on an eleven year old also. Mm -hmm. He did really bad stuff with the wand. Get our first flashback. I was actually reading my um uh, page to screen book and they had an extended version of this flashback for um it and it, i think it was partially reused in the hollows where they have that whole kind of flashback harry's having when he sees his parents yeah. die and like what leads up to it so it seems like that was excited like the original early draft of the script and then included in Deathly hollows i don't like dumbledore to question it, let her tiger be the one to tell him that he was literally like attempted to Someone intended to kill him. That's just like something pretty delicate to tell a kid. I don't think Dumbledore is willing to put in the time it takes to properly tell Harry about things. So he's like, best have Hagrid drop it all on him quickly. And then... Because <laughs> he knows Hagrid will do it. start <laughs> doing what I want. It's a weird thing to be known for. Yeah, I did a not great dying. job of not dying. And not even like intentionally, like you survived. He just didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> Conveniently forgetting to tell Harry how to get on the platform. Yeah. I find that line so weird because it makes it sound like the ticket's going to try and fly away. <laughs> Stick to your ticket? Okay. There are just Does some, it... like, Britishisms in this where they kind of say stuff like that. But he says it so specifically. Stick to it, Stick. okay? Stick to it. I'm like... like don't miss the okay. train or else you're screwed. I think no one really questions why this kid has a pet owl in a cage. Like, I feel like that's not, like, a normal thing. He's probably not the first one there that day to have an yeah. owl, so they're probably just like a weird bird convention in town. <laughs> <laughs> All these kids with birds. You know how in like middle in high school, people who took like the foods and living class or whatever had to like raise a sack of flour as a baby. Oh yeah, I had to do that. Maybe maybe they assumed that these kids had to try that with an owl. <laughs> I don't oh, know. I love the first sight of the Weasleys. They did such a good job casting all of them. How young they all look. Yeah. A little I'm Ginny. thinking, oh, you're so cute. And like, they're all older than me. But I think Ginny has the same haircut here that she does in the flash forward scene at the end of yeah, the Yeah, probably. A little bob. <laughs> love I that. love the Felt twins as the twins. Like, yeah. I can't see anyone else playing them. Like, their sense of humor. Absolutely. And just how they are with each other. One yeah. point. I guess it's a twin thing. Yeah. Well, they asked they for twins. The twins don't exactly match the like physical description because they're supposed to be sort of small and stocky. Mm -hmm. But I think they embody the like energy of the twins so much better that I really don't care. Yeah. They have red hair and they're twins. You know, that's all that really matters. Plus their yeah. energy. I don't know how they don't automatically run into people when they get out on the other side of that brick. Yeah, that's probably just a thing on like that. Someone's probably there to ensure that people. Don't crash into each other. Yeah, they keep moving once they get through and don't yeah. wait in front of the entrance. It's a beautiful train. Yeah. I miss want to ride a really train. Cute. It's a beautiful, magical yeah. transporter. Something about wizards taking trains, despite having all the magic in the world, like... Some irony yeah, in that. I, yeah, I like it because now it makes me feel so, like whimsical when I take yeah. a train somewhere. Oh, they're so cute. You know, sometimes when I to, like, see the trolley lady, I'm just flashing back to the cursed child where she's apparently some kind of demon. 
Oh, I cr- I flash back to um, Harry Potter musical where she's just a Death Eater in disguise. <laughs> That's probably the correct flashback to have. I've tried to get Cursed Child out of my head, but one thing It's completely out of mind. We don't talk about it that shall not be named. <laughs> yes. Adventures and retconning is not to be discussed. All for one was to try all the candy. That's something I would have done if I was, like, on the train by myself. Especially if it's all new candy that you've never yeah. had before. Yeah, I wouldn't want to eat something that acted like a frog, even if it was a yeah, spell. I like moves. frogs. They're friends and not food. Hard pass. Ugh, Dumbledore. <laughs> hey, gotta start off that hero worship early. Yep. He's so cool, he has a playing card. <laughs> Look how they show Hermione's character. She's already dressed in her robes. She's ready to learn. I love her face there. Yeah. She clearly has read enough of her books already to know that that is not how spells sound. And she's like, yeah. oh dear. Hit her people skills being like, you're like, that sucks. <laughs> I can do real magic. Doesn't even ask Harry's like permission to point a wand in his face. Yeah, because the social skills aren't there yet. Imagine she's just like, Avada Kedavra. <laughs> Voldemort's job's done. Already like showing her mind being really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it comes across quite as annoying as shows in the book. Because Emma Watson just is such so pleasant. Yeah. And a bit more, I think, polite almost, like just in her mannerisms. Yeah. And much her money being a bit more like unabashedly rude. And we get our first shot of Hogwarts, which is just everything I kind of imagined it'd be. Beautiful. It's perfect. It's mm-hmm. Yeah, just this shot of the castle of them running up for the boats. Yeah, I mean, it's like, such an iconic image. Iconic. Of it does moon. not actually fit okay. with the actual, like, layout of Hogwarts mm-hmm. to me, like, in practicality. Just on the way we see them interact with, like, the grounds and stuff. Yeah. But I digress. I think it changes kind of every movie, because I think like, there's been, like, yeah. general maps to show, like, how the grounds kind of laid out. But things change, locations change. I love this shot of... Professor McGonagall. Yeah. Makes her seem spooky. Yeah. Like a proper witch. You, you know? Yeah, because you just don't... This is like our first like time seeing her before, besides the beginning of the movie. You get like what her vibe is. You don't know. Is she bad? Is she good? I know that Tom felt an addition for like Harry and Ron, but I'm so glad they chose him for Draco because I just can't imagine yeah. anyone else playing Draco. He plays like this studi kid so well so well i also think he'd look funny as a ginger yeah, apparently i was so. reading um a page of screen book and apparently he dyed his hair dark for harry and ginger for ron and christopher columbus knew he wanted him for someone he just didn't know who yet but not those two and then he's like try playing like a miserable kid <laughs> he's like that's it well boy i do worry about this kid's hair though because i know a lot of them had issues with their hair for dyeing it for so many years. Yeah. Because as you grow older, like I know Rupert's hair was ginger, but as you grow older, your hair usually gets darker. Yeah. Loved how they did the Great Hall. Like, yeah, it's beautiful. I think I'll just be just like talking all about the set design and like costume designs because that's just stuff I know is for this movie. Mm-hmm. I love that one. they're real candles floating attached to like yeah. fishing line. Yeah, like how they that mentioned me in the 20 year anniversary how like one of them like caught fire. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, they just Let's had- put a bunch of children yeah. in a very flammable set and then light it on fire. Seems that that's the thing he did in movies back then because mm-hmm. everything was practical. If they redid it now, it'd be like added in after and post. I wish they kept the hats in the uniform in the later movies. Yeah, I love the hats. There's something incredibly, uh... I'm sure it's like, it gets hard to film, though, because hats will add shadows over your face and everything. Okay. Which is probably Makes why sense. they did it, because in the earlier movies, they did a lot of the close-up shots on the kids, because the kids couldn't keep their attention for very long. So it's easier to do a close-up yeah. shot, and you can cut between them than, like, a mm-hmm. wider shot where you have to make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. I know Emma Watson said in previous interviews that like she memorized basically everyone's lines. So sometimes you, they would see like her in like wider shots. She'd be mouthing that like, Harry them. and Ron's lines and be like, no, stop doing that. So That's also the reason good. why they're doing a lot of close-ups. Very Hermione of her to do all the homework. Yeah. 
Yeah, Emma said that she was always hated being like referenced as being similar to Hermione because back then being a nerd wasn't cool. But now she's like, yeah, I was totally like Hermione. <laughs> it's like it's growth. Well, here we are. Oh, hello. Shot. I've just been unexpectedly seduced. <laughs> you had to keep it PG for the podcast. And we swear on this podcast, I can do whatever I want. PG-13. <laughs> 18A. Oh, God. Kids put so much pressure on themselves to be in, like, the highest with all their, like, family. Yeah. Dumbledore sits up straight. Ah, oh, yes, my puppet is here. Wah, <laughs> things are about to get fun for me. <laughs> it's so cool to be an extra in this scene. I understand, like, all of, like, the people they have. It's such a huge cast. Yeah. Just to be sitting there, staring up at the front as they film. Mm-hmm. But oh, Dylan gives him a little wink. I have plans for you. <laughs> oh, don't say it like that. Sounds like I wish would happen in my day-to-day life. I hate cooking. Literally, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Priming Snape to be evil. That's an interesting terminology, because it makes it sound a little bit like he's after Quirrell's job for years, which almost implies Quirrell's had the job. Yeah. More than the one... I think this is before uh, the author put a lot of emphasis on the job being jinxed. Yeah. I think after... It's in the later books that they actually reference that like, had different feature... Because it's, it's just a very small thing in the this first book, but I think by this time yeah. they are making this, only the first two or three books were out. I don't think it was like, a thing to like maybe the fourth or fifth book. I do like how respectful Percy is to the ghost, yeah. you know? Hello, Sir Nicholas. How was your summer? Like, very nice. <laughs> well, I think Percy's like, schmoozes up to the ghost because I'm sure the ghosts are useful as a prefect. Yeah. Help keep an eye on the things. The little Slytherin in, in Percy's yeah. heart is like... Yeah. I do like how they do the ghosts. The ghost feels like. so natural compared to like the later movies because yeah. they were probably filmed against a green screen or something. I don't know. Just the way it was just done... Not this scene, just like little moving staircases. That probably would be like the worst thing ever. Like you're running late for class and the staircase starts to move. Yeah, I would not be. It's happy. like when you just miss an elevator or something. You just miss a subway. It would be exactly like that. All of the portraits moving as well. This is like the pink lady, fat lady, whatever they referenced in the books. But I think it changes more in the third because I think they went for a bit more humor. And Alfonso yeah. Cuarón's vision was definitely a bit more stylistic compared to Christopher Columbus, who was just kind of establishing what the series world would look like and more of like the characters where he kind of focused on the style, especially since that was one of the darker movies. Yeah. He put humor in where humor could go. I love this window ledge. Yeah. I think it's the only thing I envy about the Gryffindors as a happy Slytherin. It's kind of having like a, a tower, so they have kind of like, window they probably have a great view yeah. I mean, Under the Lake is probably yeah. a great view. I love, like, water creatures, but a little window ledge. Mm-hmm. Very fun. I like that we had this little moment that it takes place, just, like, a little break in between classes, so we kind of get just, like, a quiet moment of Harry where he's finally, like, away from the Dursleys, and he's just kind of contemplating, like, his life here. This and is he- my new life. I yeah. wonder what it will be. Very early special effects. Actually, it, I feel like yeah. it felt, still kind of holds up. It, does, it like, definitely looks old compared to what we see now, but honestly, I honestly don't think it's, like, terrible. Helen Rickman just struts into that class, like... <laughs> walk, walk, fashion, baby. <laughs> I love the potions classroom. Mm-hmm. The architecture. Just Helen Rickman's voice is just so perfect for Snape. Yeah. Like, it's not quite droning, but it's just definitely just, no, like, a chilled, like... It's so... It's deep. Yeah. And it's toned, but it's... Because I always describe Snape's talking kind of in a whisper, but he's, like... It's not Soft a whisper or silky. in volume. Yeah. It's like a whisper in tone. Just know that Snape's just been waiting for this moment. Ah, uh, finally. James Potter's kid's here. I can torture him. I love the way he delivers mm-hmm. a line. He definitely makes you not like him, too. <laughs> just I so. Mean, that's debatable. Well, it's good for us. You obviously get the idea that he's just a mean teacher and he just acts the way. We'll talk about later when he acts more suspicious. Mm hmm. It's cool that they had that actual... Like, that would be so messy. Yeah. Apparently they had, like, some... They had, like, one or two, like, real owls for, the, like, the owl shots. And then some of them, mm-hmm. the rest of them were, like, computer-generated to make it look, like, bigger. Hmm. But they did a lot of, like, had a lot of animal training, like, in the earlier movies. It's That's crazy. Fun. Yeah. 
This just seems like I got like at any class learning, I got a new sport or something. Like this is how they make yeah. you do it. Like I run guard basketball and start dribbling it. Yeah. And that's probably what would happen to me. I wonder how they expected this not to go badly. Yeah. This just seems like a recipe for a disaster. I'm sure someone ends up in the hospital wing every year. Yeah. She could grab his broom yeah. in that moment and she didn't. <laughs> like clearly he doesn't want to be up yeah. there. I like how they like kind of extended this to make this whole crazy thing around the ground. Because in the book, it's just he kind of like rises up really high and falls down. Yeah. But now it's this whole thing. They still want to give us more castle, I think. Yeah. Give us more like I'll establishing the book. Like location. books kind of tell you what happens but in film. You have to show it because we don't get mm-hmm. Harry's like thoughts or like interpretations of things. And obviously, since we're establishing the series, you want to show kind of like the layout of everything. Super negligent to leave all those children unattended to with yeah. broomsticks. I remember when we were in elementary school, there was, it was like a rule, like um, a teacher couldn't leave their classroom unless he had someone else like in the classroom with them. Watching it. Yes. And that's not with magic flying <laughs> devices. Yeah. 11 year old kids left alone to their own devices. It's like, Lord of the Flies could happen. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. The con goes like, like, my word, what the hell did I just see? Yes, he's a Gryffindor. <laughs> She's already yeah. picturing herself holding the house cap yeah. and Quidditch cap <laughs> and Snape crying. At least they don't kind of comment on the fact that, like, Harry thinks he's going to get, like, caned here. Yeah. <laughs> Time for some physical abuse. Yeah. Woohoo. I do wonder what he was teaching in this moment. <laughs> I mean, I think it's must be some kind of magical, like how to defend yourself against some type of evil creature. Like Lupin does hinky punks. And oh yeah, yeah. Whatever. They don't even make him try out. I'd yeah. be so offended if I was someone who wanted to try out for the team as Seeker. I mean, everyone knows more about yeah. Harry than he does. Ron probably does too. But he yeah, just I still wish they had included it. the midnight duel in the books. So I could just imagine it'd be so, so funny them running around the castle at night. But yeah. I guess and that they also don't have peeves in the movie, so it's just like this is just a more like easy segue into what's in the third floor. This is Norris has so much power. <laughs> she turns on the lights. Yeah, she's a she's a very gifted kitty cat. Yeah. That door specifically. Yep. Yeah. This one <laughs> locked door. My Gryffindor spidey senses are tinkling. Hermione's just reading ahead. I mean I would too if it was a magic book. Yeah. Just imagine Hermione staying up all night reading her textbooks. I would occasionally stay up reading something interesting in like history class or psychology or mm-hmm. something. If it were spells, I definitely would never have slept. No, obviously Fluffy is like a pretty early CG yes. concept. Yeah, Fluffy and on, stands up. Dates it. Yeah. Still I mean, looks she pretty good. Bit, but she's yeah. In the book, it's a separate staircase up yeah. to the men's and women's dormitories. Well, they never actually built the girls' dormitory. It's just like a, it just leads to like a landing or something. I think they referenced that somewhere. It wasn't relevant. So like they built like the boys' dormitory because things happened there, but nothing really happened. They in... probably could have just reused the boys' dormitory and like made it a bit tidier and. I don't think we ever actually see in the girls' dormitory. No. Everyone tries to go up and. He can't, obviously. I do have how they explain the rules in this because I'm not a person that picks up sports very easily. So I think that having the opportunity to show what it looks like, like the balls and the rules, it's definitely a bit more easier to comprehend. Actually yeah. seeing it visually. Like we see how the bludgers are like almost possessed almost and it makes more sense than it does just reading that the bludgers are a bit crazy because now you can imagine it's ball that you can't really control. And seeing just like how visibly small the snitch is. Yeah, I could there's no way I could see the snitch. No. Well yeah, I'm surprised Harry can see it like with glasses and everything. Cause well, I mean I guess he has really I mean his vision's probably fine with his glasses. Yeah. Can He's we like, talk no about uh, Flitwick's character design and these two movies compared to the third movies and beyond? Yeah. Cause same actor, Warren Dave Warwick Davis. But completely different um, prosthetics and everything. Yeah. So they definitely play they, fit with kind of like this old kind of kooky charm professor who I kind of envisioned him as. But then and they, then they make yeah, him like younger. They and, like make him look a bit younger and a bit more polished. Yeah, and they remove off like all the beard and the wrinkles. Like, yeah. it seems like a weird choice to change because there was nothing wrong with this version. 
you just feel like it was just a part of um Alfonso Cuaron's like artistic vision where he wanted like the choir and it's just like he kind of made Flip look more like a choir director almost I Wait, guess. can I imagine yeah, but it just seemed like a really big jump to completely change a professor's, um, yeah. like an established professor. Because like he changed some things, but it wasn't too big. Like the the pink lady, like whatever, you don't really notice her too much in the earlier books. But we meet Professor Flitwick and he like, he, he's referenced as a professor. Honestly, this part was like really well done, even though it, it like hurts. Because like I've definitely been in situations where you overhear people talking about you. Yeah. worst feeling ever and it's just such yeah. like a like a school thing to like experience yeah and then we get like ron's a bit more frustrated in the book because hermione is a lot in the books yeah i do like how they decorated for halloween, love halloween. especially because like i always love halloween yeah, i know you for the halloween queen but i definitely like how they interpreted like the halloween feast because this was like a big moment in the books and how they describe the decorations and like these giant pumpkins all the fact that like schools like reenact this and stuff like that and it's just yeah. become a meme <laughs> amazing okay slytherins go get yourself eaten by a troll yeah. that's Nate's like i have a mission to complete making himself look a bit suspicious it's like i'm glorious look at my hair yeah I know this is done really well where like they see the troll go in and they follow it in, but I still love in the book how they lock the troll in with Hermione and then they walk away and they're feeling so great about themselves. Like they just saved the school and they literally they're like, oh shit, that's the girl's wife. Or... Wait a minute, we've murdered Hermione. <laughs> that's awkward. See, this is why girls go to the bathroom in pairs or in teams. Trolls, secret evil diaries. It's probably the moment where happen. Hermione is just like, well, I hate magic school. It sucks. <laughs> Just can't go to the bathroom and cry without a troll coming in. Yeah. It's Harry doesn't like breathe, but very just stupid. Full Gryffindor, just I'll yeah. jump on it, I guess. <laughs> I don't like that they give Hermione that moment. Yeah. Ron figures it out on his own in the book, and I feel yeah. like he deserves to figure it out on his own here. Yeah, we probably should point out, like, there's definitely going to be moments coming up in the rest of the movie where... It's stuff that Ron knows, but they present as Hermione knows, or Hermione telling Ron, or something like that. But there's, there's things that he is aware of. I like that they're like, oh, we can't have death in this yeah. movie. It's for children. They just knocked it out. One of Warner Bros. was very keen on like having like a PG rating at the very least, because they want as much people to see it as possible. Mm-hmm. So I remember in the later movies, when we wanted more bad stuff, like blood, gut, gore. Not really, but like... In later movies, they, they really try to keep, like, PG, PG-13, because they want more people to see it. I love Snape's face, then. McGonagall's like, really? Snape's like, really? When Hermione yeah. says it's her fault. It's so good to keep such a pause doesn't to look at check their faces. Out. They're both, like, calling bullshit. Are you checking Snape's leg out? Ugh, oh, I'm always checking Snape out. Ew. I don't remember this just so well. I'm just Snape's little, like, snooty attitude competitiveness yeah like that harry kind of just like snape hasn't really done anything besides being a mean teacher so far in the movie yeah. so harry just gets like this teacher's mean he's he wants something that's buried in the school yeah my top suspect really great yeah speech. just like how everyone's like i mean that's what jocks are like my brother always talks about his like all his hockey injuries this is actually like the coolest thing. Like seeing the first Quidditch game, like just like this, is, like amazed me as a kid. That's a part. Maybe this yeah. is why I went into television. Just seeing this, like it was all done with like green screens and stuff, and it's all like yeah, a lot of it's CG, but it just looks so. It's so good. cute though. Oh. They all look so happy, and it still looks so good despite like it was. It's over twenty years old. So love their little Quidditch robes. They're so nice. It's really cute. Yeah. Also, the Slytherin ones look better, just saying. Just the, like, green and silver is a nice color combination. Mm-hmm. You know, like, how they kind of reiterate the rules. But properly this time. Like, during the game, so we get context during gameplay. Mm-hmm. But do you feel like rules or something, some kids, young kids especially, would have trouble following? Especially if we all this action going around. I also around. love... Yeah. What I also love is that when you actually go to, like, a hockey game live, you don't get color commentary. You just get, like, when a goal happens or a penalty happens, the announcer says, like, five minutes for whatever and penalty against Montreal. 
but we get the color commentary at the live event at these games, and I think that's so much fun. I do like that the Masui gave, like, some girl characters in the Slurin team, despite the fact that they say later on that Slurin is just an all-boys team. Because I definitely like how they show that Quidditch is co-ed, even back in, like, yeah. the early 2000s. Because I remember, like, um, sport teams being pretty gendered when I was growing up. Until I was a bit older, where they had the option if you could you could play mixed like soccer or whatever. Yeah, I very briefly played intramural basketball, and it was a co-ed team. Yes, this is like kind of in the like, same thing in the book in the movie. They kind of have Harry doing something, then Ron and Hermione doing something else at the same time. Yeah, it's time for Hermione to commit a gentle arson and assault. <laughs> yeah, and destruction of public property, probably. At least three crimes is all I'm saying. I do like how they, they kind of clue in that Quirrell is in the background and we establish that he's behind Snape. But there's the, or he's, so we know he's there so to look back on later, but it's a big mm. focus on Snape right now. I do like how they added more action to it because I, Quidditch games are interesting for me not really liking sports, but I still think it's the movies definitely bring it to life a bit more than reading about it because there's only like so yeah, much absolutely. action and like, this happens, and this happens, and this happens. But this, like, yeah. add more suspense to the final catches. I mean, that's kind of the thing also about watching a sport live versus, like, on TV, where the cameras decide what's going on that's yeah. worth watching and zoom in and stuff. When you decide where to look and there's more yeah. of, like, a full field of vision, you definitely get a lot more perspective. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Draco. Face in the hands. Full shame. It's my dad. Every time the Leafs lose. <laughs> I feel like he's worse than that. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say it for um, sensor issues. <laughs> what do you actually be saying? Oh, Harry, live in this moment. <laughs> the twins in the background, like, knocking their clubs against each other. I feel like watching Harry Potter with the face of James Potter smile this much hurts Snape more than being physically lit yeah. on fire. He's like, can we go back to before when Harry was worried and I was on fire? <laughs> Poor Hagrid, just being harassed by 11-year-olds. Yeah. He's just going to go drink himself they're, to sleep. They're taking advantage of him and it's not nice. Oh, I love seeing Hogwarts in Christmas time. It's so, like, I know it's not a Christmas movie, but, like, it's it really does. It's, it's, it's why they scene. play it. They play it all the time at Christmas. There was a Harry Potter marathon this Christmas, this past Christmas that I was watching. It just warms the heart. I would totally want to stay at Hogwarts for Christmas. Mm -hmm. My mom would never have allowed it. Yeah. But I totally would have wanted to. I probably would have missed my mom too much, but it definitely seems like a cool place to be, especially if you're like young and there's like little supervision, especially like hanging out with your friends and everything as well if they stay. Yeah. There's no bedtimes when yeah. the parents aren't there. As long as you're in the common room at a certain curfew time. Yeah, you just you have your prefects, and you depending on what prefect you get, they might be more chill than Percy would be. Yeah. Hermione's, like, really chill breaking the rules now. She lit Snape like, on fire. <laughs> Dress like, pass! Dress pass! It's a pretty I guess this just still gives me Christmas nostalgia, even though, like, it's not really a Christmas movie, but just, like... Remember being that excited for Christmas. There's something about wearing pajamas and running down a staircase yeah. that feels like Christmas to me. Yeah. Yeah, just like the excitement. Because, like, I don't find Christmas as, like, it's, it's nice. I love spending time with my family, but I don't feel, like, that general excitement because I'm not a child Yeah, it's anymore. not as magical as it is when you're a kid, for sure. The, Dumbledore and his, like, vague notes. I do like how they show the invisibility cloak in the movie. It's all, like wispy and everything yeah it looks really and like it's got a pattern to it sort yeah. of so you I'm actually a pretty simple special effect too just having the green screen on the like the one side and like the practical cloak on the other side i remember like this dvd voice. Uh, when we had it it had like games and stuff on like the second you remember when dvds had like the first disc was the movie and then the second disc was like the extras and the games and stuff yeah there was some game that had that screaming book i think and it just like ingrained in my memory even the way he reaches, yeah. it's so distinctive. Like, the mannerisms Alan Rickman portrays Snape with are... Yeah, I wonder at want. what point... Because we know that later on, they did say in the documentary, that uh, he, the author told him like what her plan for Snape was, so he could have a better idea for his character. So I wonder how mm -hmm. early on she told him. 
I think it was really early on. Would it be for, like, for this movie or would it been like in the next two? Because he just he feels like he's very, I would think early, like, early on. Like yeah. I would say like maybe she told him before he even signed on for the role. Yeah. She's like, I want you to sign on for this character. He's not what you think. This is what he is. Yeah. Because it just seems he like, plays oh, the role very deliberately. So, mm-hmm. and we do know that like he knew this whole time. The, the, the arc Ultimate for his character. Ultimate non-spoiler guy and everyone was really mad because no one else knew yeah. <laughs> which i think works really well for the movie the fact that like he was doing stuff and then christopher columbus would be like why are you doing that and he'd be like it'll make sense <laughs> trust me just taking his character into his own hands yeah at some point like i love reading snape and he's a great book character but alan rickman did so much in truly making snape into the character he became yeah yeah, I feel like I really dislike Book Snape, but like I much as I dislike Snape's character, Alan Rickman was such a good choice for him. Like I can't really imagine anyone else playing Snape the way he did, especially mm-hmm. with how it came out where he was like he kind of made the character what it was, knowing what was gonna happen to the character before any of us knew what the character yeah. was gonna be. Because this is before it was even like in mm-hmm. the books really. Like he was like And one it's of the a first gentle person. balance of being shady and mm-hmm the kind of guy you don't want to trust while also being like he had to place a certain depth to everything he did mm-hmm. i just still wish that they had portrayed how young james lily were because i think it would be like more like heartbreaking yeah but... like here they look like they're 40 well this is what would be atypical like james lily having kids when they're 21 is like crazy young that's like you how you would imagine like parents of like like a preteen yeah. would be and it makes sense but i just feel like the reason James and Lee was so, tr- so tragic is because they were so young when they died. Yeah. But this, I still, it's still very sentimental. I really wish we could have seen, like, what Ron saw in the mirror, but I get, like, the movie's trying to see it from Harry's perspective of, like, what he sees, and he's yeah. just, like, sees and Ron's Ron excitement. Ron can't see it, so. And, it's and just, Harry like, can't see what Ron sees, so. Yeah. I just love how they have, like, the really big shot in here with Harry just looking into the mirror whilst in his own world and how it reveals... Dumbledore yeah, for the first it's time. An, it's the, the angles were yeah. very well. Even the lighting in here, it's dark and kind of like gloomy almost, and that's kind of how Harry mm-hmm. is described feeling in the book, where he goes almost through like, like the grief process. Yeah. I love this Dumbledore. Harry's, I don't love Dumbledore yeah. in, uh, overall because he's yeah shady. We've discussed <laughs> our, our, our Dumbledore But hatred. I love the Richard Harris I feel like nope. Richard Harris yeah. really encapsulates what Dumbledore was, especially in the first two books where he was, where yeah. he's just kind of quirky and you don't really know, like, how you're supposed to be interpreting him. Like, is he serious? Is he not serious? But yeah. you definitely get, like, the gentle vibe, like, where he's, like, showing Harry this compared to... I do, mm-hmm. do think that, like, the future Michael Gambit Dumbledore, like, he definitely shows the wilder side of Dumbledore in the later books. Yeah. But I feel like this Dumbledore, like, Richard Harris, like, I really wish we could have seen what his, like, interpretation of Dumbledore would have been in the later books. Absolutely. Because I just feel like he really got the character. And especially what we saw in, he like, did. the documentary earlier this year. But, like, how he was really great with the kids and he was really funny and really, like, almost like a little kid. So he really got that yeah. kind of childish side of Dumbledore. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how he is so soft-spoken. Like, mm-hmm. he's almost whispering like he's really whispering here yeah. but almost whispering all the time and that's so much yeah. it's definitely a Dumbledore very big contrast compared to how michael gavin plays dumbledore where he's very big and yeah big movements and stuff and how there's that meme about like how he yells with the goblet of fire <laughs> where dumbledore is always in the books at least he's always pretty calm and put together and very deliberate yeah. but then it's, but it's also like how they interpret Dumbledore, and they both do a good job. I love these little, like, B-roll scenes for Harry in the castle. Yeah. And, like, it's really, let's just let John Williams, like, scores kind of speak for themselves as we kind of yeah. explore, like, the castle and the world we're in. I love the soundtrack. It's a really nice way to show the passing of time. Mm-hmm. The soundtrack's amazing, too. It shows them breaking out in the middle of the night, like, hooligans. Yeah. It's also like the first shot I get of like Hagrid's cabin. This is like kind of what I imagine it would be like kind of like a little like small cabin. Well, small for Hagrid. Icon of tiny house living. Yeah. Hagrid started the movement. A GTV show. <laughs> this is just like what you need. And they have 
this Hagrid in the movie a bit more responsible than Hagrid in the book. Hagrid in the book is like inviting them into this whole illegal dragon ring. Yeah. Where here he's trying to keep them out of it and they just yeah. kind of stumble across it. And he's definitely more than maybe telling them to stop butting in on this stuff. For in the book, he's kind of revealing things and then being like, oh no, I shouldn't said that. Yeah. So trying to make him a bit more of an adult. Yeah. And they kind of cut out them having to save Hagrid by getting rid of Norbert and Hagrid yeah. lets them or in here they just get caught being out of bounds. So making Hagrid look a little bit more responsible than he is really. Yeah. That brat. Yeah. I do love the scene where Malfoy's like, I got them in trouble and he's so proud of himself and then he's just like, wait, I have detention? <laughs> like, played yourself. That's one of the things I love about McGonagall. Mm-hmm. He's like, wait a minute. Is this consequences for my actions? I see the obvious difference here that Ron's on the detention instead of Neville. Yeah. It's, thanks for sneaking out to hang out with Hagrid. We're going to punish you by letting you sneak out to hang out with Hagrid. Yep. Still doesn't make sense. No matter what, book, movie. So this is our first look at the Forbidden Forest, which kind of holds up to what I imagined it looked like. It's spooky. Trees everywhere. I feel like there should be more low-down branches. Like, mm -hmm. I get why they did it like this. It's easier to, mm -hmm. like, see the characters, but I want yeah. more reaching out to grab you branches like this one. Mm -hmm. They definitely have to make sure that there are places in the, where the cameras and equipment can go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still don't see why it's a good idea to separate children into the forest. Alone in the dark when they don't know any magic. Yeah, especially, yeah. Especially like there's like a mysterious beast that's hunting unicorns and yeah, they don't know what it is. So yeah, yeah let's leave some kids out. Mm -hmm. So like, why do you send eleven year old boys that are just gonna antagonize each other just like this? That being said, Fang is a good dog, and I yeah. would go out in the woods with Fang. His face. <laughs> oh God. I mean. That's pretty traumatizing. Mm hmm It's a little more um, physically present than it's described. Yeah. Like, it's not a wisp. It looks very much like the same cloak Voldemort wears in the flashback to Harry's parents' death. Which yeah. I guess is easier for kids to follow because it's, like, consistency. <laughs> I just love can see Trey go in the background. Just screaming. Running around. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think they definitely wanted to have, like, the bad guy be a bit more physically present, so it's, like, an actual physical force. Yeah. So it's probably easier to um, portray than, like, the whisper vapor that Voldemort's supposed to be in yeah. the books. It's friends, our centaur friend. <laughs> I think I actually prefer how friends, like, centaurs look in this movie compared to how they look in the Order of the Phoenix. Because I feel in the Order okay. of the Phoenix, they look a bit too generated. Okay. Like obviously here, like, it's a computer image. It's obviously CG, but I think it, there's probably more practical effects done. Mm-hmm. It just looks more like it fits in better into the environment than I think the yeah. centaurs do in Order of the Phoenix. Like how Hagrid had the crossbow ready to go. Yeah, well, it's so dangerous he needs to carry a crossbow, but the children are fine unarmed. Well, they technically have wands. They could light sparks, cast locomorphs. <laughs> they haven't taught them. Harry still hasn't done a spell. Mm. They could shove their wands really hard up Voldemort's nose yep, and hope That's the only the move they know. Harry's speaking, like, intuitive leaks right now. Which is pretty mm -hmm. close. Like, he, Snape's not Snape, but, like, he gets the idea that Voldemort's yeah. involved. And makes the connection. Yeah. I like the big swallow Ron does before he says, kill you. What? When Ron goes, yep. kill you. Well, that's, like, that's a big, cute. kind of crazy thing for a year old to be, like, asking, like, who, what year olds are thinking about, like, death and stuff. And Harry's just like, oh, yeah, you probably would have killed me tonight if mm -hmm. friends didn't come. Like, Harry's interpretation of, like, his life. 
I do love this scene of them all running to her desk and then they have in like the fifth or sixth movie. She's like, why is it always you three? Yeah. <laughs> Haunting McGonagall. She's trying to do her job. I'm sure Minerva, not wanting the children to go on adventures and almost die, reaches up to Dumbledore like, hey, the kids know about this and they're worried about it. And he's like, perfect. Dumbledore's like, it's totally fine. Nope. Your Snape moment. Speaking of fine. <laughs> transition delivery his hair was made mm-hmm. much too luscious like it's not greasy yeah it's like shiny well, and they, soft they definitely, and like most movies kind of they don't really put in like the ugly traits like i think like hermione is supposed to be kind of like an ugly duckling in like the first few books yeah. until she has like her transformation and double the fire but they obviously want the characters to look nice because you want people look at people yeah but Steve's aesthetically. supposed to look like a bad guy you know yeah so they didn't need to go so hard on making his hair so glorious. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love how Neville's pajamas have little teddy bears on them. <laughs> they're so cute. I mean, they're actual children, and it's nice to be reminded yeah. once in a while. Yeah. I mean, Ron's not they wrong. and scary. That's like the best compliment someone can receive. I want to be both brilliant and yeah. scary. Just leaving Neville on the floor. Like, at least put him on a couch. Yeah. Put a pillow under his head. Decked on. Like, what was their plan to get past Fluffy without the um, flute? Yeah, like Harry brings the flute Hagrid bought him in the book, but here... In the book, yeah. Here there's no flute. Here, it's just uh-huh. a harp that I, that, that Quirrell had left. Playing. Exactly, but they don't know if Quirrell's yeah. been there already until now. So yeah. they went there with no instrument, knowing music is what they needed, and just hoped for the best. Yeah. Where's the ukulele Ron keeps in his bag, you know? <laughs> Harp is a weird choice of instrument. It's not exactly the most portable or inconspicuous. Well, you, you imagine that they probably just, like, transfigured it or magic it out of nowhere. I guess. But a harp is still a weird choice. I guess it's just the most, like, close to, like, a lullaby. The most soothing. Okay. So what spas usually have, like, a harp or something. That's pretty soothing. So here you have, like, Devil's Day Redstones. And this is where Hermione literally freaks out and forgets she can do magic but here they kind of interpret it where ron's freaking out and yeah another it's hermione classic that take away hermione take away hermione's flaws and try and make her perfect and mm-hmm. make ron funny and take away his moments of cleverness you know taking away ron being able to have a clear head where hermione has the clear head here which I get they're trying to establish Hermione is like she's the one that knows all the facts and she's smart. Yeah. But I think it says a lot to her character because she is the, the one that knows all the facts and is smart, but she can't think when bad things are happening. Yeah. Exactly. It is, it's it's a human trait because I think we're all like that when things are happening in the moment. Not a lot of us have the ability to stop and like think clearly. I do get they probably just wanted a sense of the, a comedic moment here too, where Ron usually is the comedic moment. Yeah. But this is just the, kind of the start of Ron being kind of passed over for Hermione and her character in the films. I mean, I think it starts in the uh, bathroom with the troll when Hermione in the movie yeah. reminds Ron how the spell works instead of Ron yeah. figuring out and doing it on his own. I definitely think it started innocently. Like, Ron is still a pretty strong character in the first two films. I feel it just like, like as the movies go on. And Hermione is just doing more compared to Ron in the later, especially in the later films. Yeah. And more of Ron's moments are left out. And this adds like a different level to it. Because I think in the book, they didn't attack Harry, but they ran away from Harry. Yeah. So this makes it more a challenge. And it's just definitely a more more intense moment for the movie to build up to each level. So we get the big boss. So you could have, like, the Devil's Snare try to kill them, the keys that try to kill them. They actually used some of the chest pieces in the room of requirement in the last movie when they were, like, running away from the fire. I think they just okay. they had a bunch of like, just random props that they put in that room. Because it was supposed to be the room that people hid all their stuff. So they I mean, it's put... probably where they actually ended up, yeah. you know? Canonically, yeah. like, everything ends up there. Yep. Yeah. That's where everyone goes to hide all their stuff. Honestly, in reality, the room of requirement would just be hair elastics. Yeah. <laughs> just like a bobby room pins. full. Yeah, hair elastics, bobby pins. A lot of single socks. Yeah. 
all the socks are there. <laughs> Chapstick. I actually think of like the magic behind it, like what McGonagall did, like she transferred the pieces, but she also made it so like the pieces could take direction. And yeah. so they acted like real things. Well, chess pieces. Yeah. And of course, I'm sure each chess piece knows the way on which it can move. Yeah. It wouldn't allow Ron to yeah. move a pawn diagonally if it wasn't for killing. Yeah. I do wonder how Kroll got past it. Like if he actually played across or if like Voldemort and him just like did some magic to like get through or whatever. I mean, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe Kroll's okay at chess? Maybe. <laughs> I just feel like Voldemort doesn't have the patience for chess. Yeah, no, no, for sure. He's like, get me to the stone, and Coral's like, but I gotta play a game of chess first. Ron's true Gryffindor moment. Yeah. This quote. I love it. <laughs> I love the attitude in that line. Listen, yeah. this is how it is. Well, it's kind of true. It kind of plays it for the rest of the series. Like, Harry has to go on and die by himself. Mm -hmm. Leaving Ron and Hermione to, like, get rid of the other horcruxes, or so he thinks. I love that Ron stays up on top of the horse like that. He doesn't, like, crawl lower to try and be less easy to stab. He's going for the dramatic yeah. of it. The theatric. I understand they didn't include the potions task, but I really wish they did. Mm-hmm. That nerd of me wants to see it. Wants to see her mind thinking very deeply for a minute. Mm-hmm. I guess there's just so much more that they can't really make it, like, this big, intense task they did for the other two. Yeah. There's only so much you can do with, like, we can't really show... There's no really way to show how her mind thinks, especially since... Yeah. It'd just be, like, trying to process time, really. Yeah, and all exactly. they're doing is drinking a potion. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a cool, but like, still, the way, like... They could have had it been short, I just think. A deleted scene or something. It wasn't Snape. It wasn't even Voldemort. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it was... Hagrid! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kind of don't really touch on why Snape and Harry doesn't like Harry until, like, later on in the movies. Yeah. It's like, Snape tried to save you, what? Anyway, moving on. I like that it actually shows, like, Harry in the mirror. So we get the context yeah. of, like, he has the stone. And we physically see the stone go into his pocket. That's such a good yeah. way to show it. Because, like, it's described in the book, but actually physically seeing it. So cool. Mm -hmm. Especially seeing, like, it's the same mirror that he saw earlier. This is not, I don't think it's as disturbing as it's described in the book. But it's still pretty disturbing. Yeah. I feel like it reminds me of that, like, internet trend of, like, potatoes that look like certain people. Yeah. You know? But I just remember yeah, this It's like be... a potato that kind of looks like someone more so than specifically Voldemort. This just reminds me of something that would probably would have scared me when I was a kid. Just, like, looks mm -hmm. creepy. I didn't like scary things growing up. Oh, it's I like scary creepy. things. Look at nose! <laughs> Just before he gets his own body back and he gets his own body and he's like, you know what? Forget the nose. No nose for me, thanks. No nose, just slits. Yeah, see, this is where he snaps his fingers and like fire comes and the book gets ropes. Yeah. And I just thought it was movieism, but it's real. This is much more dramatic here. Yeah. The like, well, fire they, looks yeah. cooler. Well, they want a big like, so they're big for that, like showdown. So they want it to be yeah. like big and dramatic and theatric. This is the, they have Voldemort trying to manipulate Harry a bit more than he did in the book. In the book, he's like, join me or you die. But here he's like, oh, if you come, if you give me the stone, I'm like, I'll bring your parents back. He's really trying to, like, manipulate a child. And it kind of shows yeah. Harry being like, hmm. But in Don't the end... Don't do it, Harry Potter. Harry kind of knows that he's on the good side. He's with Dumbledore. He's against Voldemort. Yeah. Yeah. 
Just calling Voldemort out. This is like intense. It just flies. Was that like, was that flying? Was that a jump? I don't know. <laughs> it was crazy. That's like. I think it would have been scarier if he like slowly walked towards Harry. And so here he turns like, to stone. Honest. But in the book, it's kind of grosser where it's like burn blistery yeah. skin. I think that would have been made the ratings go up. Yeah. But I think it's also like, cool yeah. that it's stone because I think it's more of special effects to kind of show where he's being like physically stopped, like his hands falling off and stuff. But I think if it's bl- yeah, blisters, yeah. I think would have made the rating go up. And I think it's also a bit scarier. Especially since yeah. they're trying, it's, it's, for, it's for kids. Like, reading about blisters is fine. I think actually seeing it, especially since blisters kind of gross people out. So yeah. they're trying to take away the gross factor. Well, that was fun. So here you're going to get, like, the the wispy vapor of Voldemort. Oh, yeah, and that was Harry's kind of Horcrux moment where it's like someone was trying to kill the Horcrux container. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so the Horcrux container... Killed That's them. totally a horror crook saving the day moment, hundred percent. Mother's love. Yeah. Sorry, Mom. The <laughs> Dumbledore. I do love like the Wisp of Voldemort kind of coming back for one last attack. I wonder if that was Voldemort. Like, I mean, obviously not in the book because this. Does not yeah. happen like this kind of, but that's like hypothetically Voldemort being like, "Oh, I could possess Harry." Yeah. What if what I? What if he had tried to possess Harry this early on, and he could have realized that he can't possess Harry? <laughs> or maybe it'd be easier to possess Harry because there's a piece of him already in Harry. Mm-hmm. Well, they do say later on he does try to possess Harry, and he couldn't. And Dumbledore says, "Oh, it's because you love so much, and he can't. He can't be uh, in the body love. that loves that loves so much." But I'm like, maybe because there's already a bit of his soul that's in Harry, and he's yeah. like, "Get out." And it's defending mine. itself. Yeah. My container. He wakes up and sees presence, and he's like, oh, yeah, this is great. He's not even concerned why he's <laughs> in the hospital. I love the amount of beard. Yeah. And hair. It makes me yeah, so this happy. This look of Dumbledore is what I wish they kind of kept when they did Michael Gambit. Like, still look with the crazy long robes and, like, the long hair and everything. Yeah. Like, I feel like they definitely tried to, like, they didn't do everything with the, like, the costumes they had were good. Especially in the earlier movies, but I feel like they lost. But less moved. eccentric. They, they sort yeah, of like that's what they did. They moved away from like less eccentric robes and stuff. Especially they, they had mm-hmm. them in basically muggle clothes a lot in the later books, which I get yeah. that kind of choice. But also it's just kind of like if you're gonna be in the magical world, like I want like crazy magic styles because I feel like they, they could I want have sold. really long sleeves. Like look at those sleeves like, they on could that have, like, friggin' outfit. Have those as merch. I feel like people would have bought them. My friend's yeah. mom, like, hand sewed me, like, my own, like, Hogwarts cloak for my birthday when I was 10. Aw, that's really nice. Yeah. And she made one for her as well. And, like, they were, like, the coolest things ever. We're whispering because I'm very old. <laughs> and very old people whisper. Well, no, this is how, like, they saw Dumbledore as kind of someone who was, like, just very soft-spoken and just, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like when I'm shit-talking Dumbledore, I'm picturing the other version of Aldo- of, <laughs> of Dumbledore more yeah. in my mind. Not that they're not the same person who have the same intentions and are both trying to get Harry killed, but... There's, like, the calmer this Dumbledore one seems, and the This one seems sweeter. It's easier for me to, like, not want to shit-talk this Dumbledore. Yeah. I think it's hard because, like, Richard Harris passed away before they could do the third movie. So it's just, like, this is the Dumbledore we could have had, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But apparently they originally wanted for um, Richard Harris's replacement, they wanted Sir Ian McKellen, who played Gandalf oh. in The Lord yeah. of the Rings. But apparently he said no because he knew for a fact that Richard Harris hated him and thought his <laughs> acting was bad. And he's like, I can't do that to the guy. I mean... Nice and, and then he would have totally had a corner on the wizard market, you know? Yeah, that's true. It would have been too much. Too much power. Oh, this little I love how chill they are about the yeah, situation. Yeah, you're just kind of uniting them in their little friendship. How did that almost die and go? Pretty good. Oh, good to that's know. That's alright. Look at Dumbledore. He friggin' put up the Slytherin colors and everything. Yeah. What a dick. And that the hat's back. See, I, I think these hats, hats work. I don't think it shadowed their face too much. I don't know why they stopped wearing them. 
guess it probably gets a lot having to have like I know probably they had to have multiple mm-hmm. costumes for all the kids. They are pretty goofy. Growing. Like I feel like the witches or should have witches hats. Like I like the brim on a witch's hat. I guess that's why they don't have mm-hmm. brims because yeah. that would cause shadows. But yeah, these look like gnome hats to me. That's true. Like, when I was matching the hats, I was matching a witch hat, but I'm assuming that they don't have them. Like, Maggie Smith has one, but you have, probably have to wear it a certain way. Like, she yeah. was wearing it tilted back, so it won't cause a shadow on her face. Yeah. We earned it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, we did our homework, we did the bonus questions. But when my grandma sees this, this part, she's just like, oh, that little brat. <laughs> she doesn't like that <laughs> boy. <laughs> she's like, oh, that little brat. That brat. Snape's already so pissed off about it. Just sitting there, sitting there for smell and waste, and I'm like, I fucking hate you. So much. My God. He's like, you're I should the still worst. be a Death Eater. <laughs> God, I can't wait to kill this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's just like, oh man, something bad's going to happen. So, is it pure love and outstanding courage? It's outstanding courage and being a horror <laughs> Yeah. Being a horror Imagine horror. he just says that, book one. <laughs> like Horcrux. Hmm. Everyone, back to the forbidden section of the library. <laughs> I'm just watching this. This is like a great like moment. Like they finally win the house cup. Like for looking back as an out, you're like that wasn't really fair. <laughs> like yeah. poor Slytherins. Like we don't like Malfoy, but they still like played by the rules ish. And yeah, Gryffindor just won because Dumbledore changed his mind. Literally, Harry, Neville, and Hermione and Ron got their points in one night. That made them from last to first place. And Slytherin did good things probably all year to try and win the house cup. So as I just thought of something. Uh, this is the scene that they filmed. One of the first scenes they filmed. And this is where they tried to put the contacts in Dan Rudd's eyes. So he oh, had green yeah. eyes. Because the author is like, he has to have green eyes. It's very important for like the plot of the story. So like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then he had a really severe allergic reaction. So they're like, okay, never yeah. mind. But she's like, you know what? He can have his eyes. Because he has an allergic reaction, but just make sure that Lily's eyes are, bl- are the same. And and then they didn't do that. And they didn't do that. <laughs> but I just feel he he suffered through a lot. Like he had an allergic reaction to the contacts, and I also read the the first pair of glasses that he had. He also yeah. had an allergic reaction to those. So like he's a committed actor, <laughs> working through all these allergic reactions. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, why did we find the one kid who's allergic yeah. to everything? I also found that they tried to put, um, because this was one of the first scenes they filmed, they also were going to put give Hermione false teeth, because Hermione's known for having yeah. buck teeth earlier on. But um, the it was just like, it, it impeded Emma's, the way she could speak. So they're just yeah. like, well, like, whatever. So, you know, they definitely tried things out in this scene that they didn't actually stick with. But it's also kind of cool. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't know how they film things out of order in... TV because you're you're doing it by location, so you're like doing like what when you have this location for, and also kids can like work a certain amount of hours. Yeah, because child labor laws, so they actually do it when they have who they have who they have available, what days, and like when they have a location available. Oh, this this Hagrid, Hagrid and the train and the music score, beautiful, it's beautiful, love it. And then the this song. Is why this yeah. is one of my favorite movies to watch. Just like. Introduction to the characters, but also just, like, introduction to what is the Harry Potter fandom. Like, this music, scenery. The castle in the background. The cast. It's perfect. So, overall, thoughts about the first movie? It's really cute. Yeah. I, I feel mean, like it's hard to narrow it down to a few points, but yeah, they to... cast the Golden Trio and Neville perfectly. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously... Alan Rickman as Severus Snape is one of the greatest casting choices of all time. Um, yeah, I think those are my. Yeah, I think main the big things I've thoughts. talked about in this movie is just like casting in general, perfect, love it, obsessed with it. Generally, I love the first two movies just because I love Christopher Columbus. I know he talked about in this Harry, the Harry Potter twenty year special that he like saw this in his mind, and that's why he really pushed to be the first person to direct it. And I really mm-hmm. would have liked to see like what his vision would have been going forward. But I'm glad that he directed yeah. the first two movies just because I like his establishing vision for the series and how he was able to set the series up going forward. Because I love if he did these first two movies are like my comfort movies for Harry Potter. These are the ones that if I want to watch a Harry Potter movie, I usually go to these two rather than any of the other ones. And yeah, yeah I just like the beginning, like the innocence of it all. And like this one probably feels like the most nostalgic and like the whimsy and everything like everything kind of just fits together yeah and it's very like and because it's still lovely. more of a kids movie than a lot yeah. of the later ones it's still it's not that heavy 
Yeah. Like, they don't even play the heavy parts to be that Yeah, it's definitely a lighter movie, which is why it's more of a comfort movie. Yeah, so what would your rating for this be? Like, out of five? Like, five stars? Out of of five stars? I never rate anything out of five. That's hard. Um, Or should we do ten stars? Yeah, that's easier for my brain. Ten stars. I mean, I would give this film a 90. I would say Mm -hmm. I love the casting. I would have slightly altered like I would have liked if they left in the potions yeah there's um, definitely scenes that we would like to see and in like the, movie the fight they in fit. the yeah um, I would have really liked to see Draco get punched <laughs> I think <laughs> that would have right, been fun yeah. but I think they made good choices with what they chose to take out generally mm-hmm. yeah, I think they included I feel like the most of the, important of the story stuff. is very clear and it makes sense compared to the other movies where they cut things out and it doesn't really fit quite much so the early two movies yeah mm-hmm. they definitely included what needed to be included and what they cut wasn't super important. Like, I don't really get pissed off until later movies where things get cut out that I'm really mad that about. That are important. I, I probably rate this around, like, eight stars. I feel like it's perfect. Like, okay. I love everything about it. Like, there's a few scenes that I wish, like, had been included that were in the books. Or, but most of the stuff I like, mm-hmm. I like, the, it flows really well as a movie and I like what's included. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. I'm that's... giving it a nine just because yeah. I think that's probably the highest. I'm probably going to rate this movie the highest, I would say. Yeah, yeah, this might be just one Just because of my it takes ones. out the least important stuff. Like it, and it yeah. doesn't upset me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. And if we did include the video for this, thanks for watching our first video podcast. But yeah, if mm-hmm. you have any um, thoughts about the movie review, you can share them with us on social media at Potter Revisited, or you can. Send us an email at PotterRevisitedPodcast at gmail.com and we will be back again to jump back into the Harry Potter series starting with Chamber of Secrets. We'll be done jumping into the first chapter next episode. Bye! Bye! Bye.